Yeah, it's good news. Um, Tommy Robinson's out of jail. Uh, well, why is it relevant? This day and age. Um, well, the only reason I've ever I've commented, commented on the Tommy Robinson thing recently is um the hate speech laws in Britain now the hate speech laws in Britain are um of relevance to Australia and Canada and New Zealand but they're of relevance to the Commonwealth countries because um uh, one reason is they, a lot of the hate speech laws from Britain have been basically, they've set up almost carbon copies of them in, um, of the British laws, they've been, there's carbon copies of them almost in Australia and Canada. Um, and New Zealand. Um, but there's variations of how they've been implemented in particular jurisdictions have been have varied, but um, uh, uh, the thing about the hate speech laws is a couple of things. Um, it seems from a lot of commentators like on the internet that there's this movement, there's this, that there's an ongoing movement to buy vociferous and well-funded political groups to shut down free speech. Uh, and there's this creeping agenda and it's been getting worse and worse over the years. And it's true the hate speech laws are the, um, I mean, just the silliest and, you know, ill-considered, half-baked, um, just, well, they're just dumb and vindictive rules, just cooked up by politicians who just seem to have offered pressure groups um, a way of just being, of spitefully just shutting up and gagging and vindictively pursuing anyone who basically criticizes them at all. Um, and Tommy Robinson's not the only example. I mean, he's a good example of someone like yeah, it's a good example of someone who's if you follow the mainstream media narrative it's astounding to see that the mainstream media narrative um, carries on with just just utter lying nonsense about the whole thing. Like he's called a far right, I mean, you know, he's called a far right agitator and blah, 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 blah. And he's, the man, there's this sort of, sort of, um, seems to be this sort of, um, uh, there's this uniformity. There's this uniformity of opinion on the mainstream media, which is totally lefty, um, that, that, you know, that Robinson and the EDL are a far right movement. Um, and, well, that's not all. I mean, the fact is, not only is he grossly misrepresented, um, 
they lie about everything. They lie about. They misrepresent, you know, what he was in, what he was actually arrested, which is ironic. I mean, you know, if a conspiracy-minded person would say, I mean, they're only pursuing Robinson because the establishment wants to shut him up, and they've got these trumped-up charges, and they've just charged him with some anything, with some something. They've just charged him with anything they could get their hands on, and. And, and they're throwing him in jail on these absurd, exaggerated charges, and uh, um, and but the mainstream media didn't even like, didn't even accurately report what he was actually ostensibly in jail for. I mean, if the mainstream media was cooperating with the establishment, you would have, you know, you would have expected them to say, you know, oh, how terrible it was for a man to um, report on a court from corporate. <laughs> I mean, the thing that they even said that, like, I mean, he was actually reporting a trial which was actually a sentencing hearing and the trial had finished they'd already found the defendants in the grooming gang case they'd already found they'd already found the defendants guilty they'd been pronounced guilty and it was a sentencing hearing and Robinson was present at, present at Leeds court for the sentencing um, and how does how does someone reporting on a sentencing hear, hearing affect the outcome of the trial? I mean, <laughs> at all? How does it prejudice the jury when the jury has already convicted them? <laughs> but the, 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 the whole mainstream media played on played on with this sort of sort of acting stupid, and well, they always do, but. Um, anyway, but this brings, I mean, this brings to me the, the earlier case of Brendan O'Connell, who, um, who ended up in Western Australia, in Perth, he ended up getting thrown in prison for a couple of years, like, really serious, like, in maximum security, and, um, and he ended up getting bashed in jail uh, and ended up being hospitalized um, because some he, he got into it I mean he was actually on one of my, my a website I was um administrating administering um, and he was posting stuff on revelations about uh, Mossad Israeli Mossad meddling in Australia's military military security and um, stuff like that. Serious things, serious revelation, revelations about. And, you know, and some of the other stuff about uh, um, Verizon um, Israeli companies, IT companies getting their hands on people's, um, getting access to people's um, um, communications. Um, now, be that as it may, I mean, the allegations aside that he made, I mean, he got into got into went to some protest in downtown in Perth, and he got into a shouting match with some Jewish groups, Israeli groups, and it ended up at this ridiculous kangaroo court kind of um, lynch mob where. They all made these false accusations at him, or exaggerated accusations, and he ended up going to jail for terrorism or hate speech or something. Um, and he was actually now. Um, yeah, you know, 
it seems to me quite plausible that he was deliberately baited. I mean, the you know the establishment in Israeli intelligence just wanted to shut him up and stop him talking about the things he was talking about, and so they deliberately baited him at one of these protests, and then just uh, got him rammed through the court and thrown in jail, and just they paid people in jail to beat him up. It seems plausible this is what happened. Um, so these anti-terror laws, you know, hate speech laws, they're just, well, I mean, in the case of Brendan O'Connell, they were being used, obviously, just to, just to silence people. Um, uh, uh, and there's, I mean, there's more examples of that sort of thing. That, uh, people they wanted um, gagged, one or another, are either threatened with or actually chucked in jail. And that's, um, in effect, what they were trying to do to Tommy Robinson. Now, I mean, there was... Uh, and... You know, in the United Kingdom, there's not, he's not the only instance of people being thrown in jail for um, hate speech or uh, like that, that guy who was put the bacon on the door of the mosque and ended up in jail and getting beaten to death by Muslims in jail. Um, um, Now, I mean, the hate speech laws in, the, like, Britain and the Commonwealth, I mean, they're being used to, they're being used by the government to persecute their political enemies. Um, but if you read the history books, if you take the long view, uh, um, as they say, from one point of view, this is pretty much standard, pretty standard stuff for um, the Anglo-Saxon countries. I mean, Anglo-American countries, they all function like this. Um, they always have. Um, and it's the same in Europe as well. I mean, there's always... Uh, there's always some kind of a people are always concocting some kind of a pseudo lawful way of um, persecuting their political enemies um, one way or another um, uh, Uh, and and people talk about how the past and how well like I mean a hundred over you know hundred hundred and fifty hundred and twenty years ago in Britain um, I mean you couldn't attend a public university like Oxford or Cambridge um, you couldn't go to Oxford or Cambridge if you were not an, an Anglican, um, a member of the Anglican, Church, Anglican Communion. And Muslims, Jews, all kinds of Catholics, all kinds of dissenters, Baptists and whatever, they were, um, they were prevented, were forbidden to go to Oxford or Cambridge. Um, um, now that was changed by um, just the activities of people like Augustus de Morgan and such. 
Um, but I mean, regardless, the these sort of the opinions and these me, these the sort of the way society was 100, 200 years ago seems in, backward and silly to um to modern eyes. But really, we I mean, society hasn't changed at all, really. They're still running pogroms. They're still, they've still, the secret police are still running pogroms. They're still, they're still erecting all kinds of barriers to, um, uh, employment. Uh, they're still they're erecting all kinds of barriers and all kinds of hurdles for. Um, people who aren't the right political persuasion. Um, yeah, there's all kinds of hurdles, all kinds of shibboleths, all kinds of um, um, yeah, there's all manner of uh, of nastiness going on, even today. And I mean. Like, I mean, modern people, modern agnostic atheist types that laugh about you know, religion and Christianity and society and wars over religion and how backward and silly and um, stupid they seem to admit, but... Um, But basically, if you look at things like Tommy Robinson, you realise nothing has changed. Um, uh, I mean, hate speech. They've got this... I mean, all you have to do is you can publish something on the internet, publish an opinion, disagreeing with somebody. What? I mean, somebody rings up... Somebody rings up and complains to a policeman police officer or some mysterious unaccountable government bureaucra bureaucracy and complains about something and uh, and you can be find yourself in, in court and in jail um, only you know, unaware of the charges against you and not even not being not even knowing knowing who your accusers were, let alone being able to question them um, or cross examine them. Uh, I mean I mean the government in the United Kingdom, amongst others, behaves basically like not really different at all from the stuff. Um, there's no, I mean, there's no meaningful difference between uh, the um, the British government and the Nazis. I mean, in terms of, or even this, there's no difference between them and the the East German Stasi. You know, you say something government doesn't like, you can just disappear. Um, uh, um, so, yeah, um, welcome to the game.